everyone, uh, welcome back to another Marnie and Michael Monday. So a while back, I think it might be four years ago at least, I'm not sure, I'll link it below, I made a video called What to Look For in a Spouse. And Unbeknownst to me, I guess you made that video. I did. Okay. And he's never seen it. I've asked him to watch it. Yeah, I have never watched it. You I've won't just, watch uh, it. That was your thing. Okay, so a lot of you have requested that Michael share what the five things he would look for in a spouse if he if I did not exist. I yeah. Guess. yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, he previewed his high points with me, and I think it's very interesting considering we have not seen each other's videos. Well, and I still have not seen your video no, even right now. Why not? Well, I want to see how this goes, and then maybe we can match it up, see if we have some commonality or some overlap. Well, one would hope, right? Yeah. Okay, so without okay. further ado, I'm yeah. just going to sit back and listen. You did go you, for did it. Did you have a list of five? Because mine's a list of five. I believe of... I did. Wait, okay. I'm trying to cross my legs. I would say I have kind of a list of five non-negotiable <laughs> non things or factors that you look for. Um, this is really from the advent of obviously being in my mid-40s now and having been married for a couple of Decades, Not quite. I guess. Uh, maybe it's something the kids can listen to at some point when they start getting serious with somebody in in the next several years, and oh. this is something they can consider. So, I thought the first important thing from my perspective, and I know that you know we've benefited from this over the years, is that when you're getting serious with somebody, I think it's important that you're on the same page with respect to parenting roles, e even if you're not a parent and you may never even desire to become a parent, I would say that parenting, the concept of parenting, is something that is an important factor that you want to be on the same page with. Can you expand on that? Sure. I mean, if, it, if you're with somebody and you know that you don't want to have kids, it's important that you're getting serious with somebody who equally doesn't want to have kids. Yes. And then on the flip side, in a more complicated way, if you're with somebody um, who wants to have kids, you better make sure that you want to have kids and then add it to the fact that you know, once you start thinking about having kids and, and you're on the same page to have kids, you better have a pretty good idea about you know the different roles that you're going to play in parenting. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, is somebody going to stay home and be kind of a more full time parent, or are you going to kind of coordinate so that you're both are going to work? And if that's the case, how are you going to divide you know discipline and who's going to be in charge of? working on school stuff or coordinating extracurricular activities it just becomes kind of complicated. So for you and I, I guess to put it into our example, we knew that we both wanted to have kids almost immediately. Well, I need to back it up and say, okay. I've been watching Real Housewives of New York. That's why that phrase just popped out. Okay. We talked about this Yeah. on our first date. We did? You don't remember. I mean, I think I generally do. You probably remember it with more specifics I would say more specificity I, I yeah but for sure we definitely because I think I was far enough along and in, in my law school career and you were obviously embarking in the world that I don't really want to waste my time with somebody that wasn't going to want to be a mom I didn't want to and I'm sure you may have felt the same way about somebody no, I didn't want to be with someone that. who didn't want to be a mom either yeah, no I'm kidding exactly. <laughs> and and um you're not judging what the decision is. You just say that everybody yeah. needs, the oh, couple needs to be on the same page. you got to have a common page. connection on okay. that issue. And I think that over the years, well, you know, I've dabbled in family law periodically through the years. Goodness. And so I've seen stuff, unfortunately, where relationships break down and, you know, a lot of it kind of emanates from there's just a lack of a connection in terms of parenting. All right, do we want to be parents? Yes. And if so, What's the strategy going to be in terms of parenting? So a lot of those stressors down down the line can be taken care of if, you know, you have to, and this is not always easy, but you have to kind of separate. You can be attracted to a lot of people, but when you take it to the next level of attraction plus having a long-term relationship, maybe a marriage, some of the stuff you have to allow intellect to oh, come into play sure. or else you could make a potentially fatal error. Okay, so that's my number one factor. Just parenting in a very general sense okay. with lots of specifics underneath it. The second factor is lifestyle. This is something you can pick up even when you're in college, high school, maybe a little early, but lifestyle. You have to be on the same page with, re with respect to lifestyle. So, you know what? I would say a common theme that weaves throughout all of my five factors is commonality. Yeah. You actually, so I mean, I, I'm not a big subscriber to opposites attract. No. I would say that true attraction, long-term 
relationship success is based on an overlap, a commonality on your factors that are important to you. So That's true. lifestyle, commonality and lifestyle. You've got to have lifestyle habit, habits and traits that make, uh, that make you feel comfortable. So the woman that, uh, you know, that I'm choosing to marry, or if a woman is going out with a man that they want to be with, they've got to have a lifestyle that makes that person feel comfortable. It may not be, it would not be comfortable for me, for instance, to be married to somebody who smokes right. or to somebody who imbibes in a lot of drinking or... Because that's just not your thing. ...doesn't engage in generally a healthy lifestyle, you know, just like a bunch of junk food in the house. I mean, a little bit in moderation is okay, but I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah. It would just be weird for me. For I you. I wouldn't feel comfortable. And so that to me is like a litmus test. It's like a telltale sign. It's like, hey, you know what? Something inside me doesn't feel comfortable being with this person because, you know, they like to go out and party and get wasted or they like to smoke. And uh, I wouldn't want to live in that kind of an environment over any long but period of time. But if you were a partier. Yeah. Likewise, you might feel differently. Right. And, um, and as a consequence, whatever that lifestyle is, hopefully you choose match. a lifestyle that's positive and productive. But, you know, I realize... A positive and productive lifestyle is kind of uh, subjective, mm -hmm. and so whatever it is, that lifestyle needs to match and overlap, and you got to have commonality. So for me, I think you got to have parenting. Number two, it's got to be a lifestyle commonality. Three, I've kind of categorized as social graces, and that could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. It, but it, yeah, for me, it means um, somebody that's able to be graceful. Uh, you know, in, in all the ways to have a sensibility about you, the ability to interact with um, others and to interact with, like, for instance, teachers or be involved in the community and to be kind of, you know, gracious in the way that you interact. And huh. uh, that's important to me. You know, somebody that's not, that, um, that you're going to be embarrassed to be okay, with. Okay, yeah. You know, it's not like to make sure that you get the, the, uh, the mother-in-law to approve kind of thing. But there's Thank probably God. an element of that a little bit. <laughs> you know, you probably want a little bit of that, I would say. Um, and the other thing is you want to be able to spend time with that person, not only in group settings, but you got to be able to spend a lot of alone time with your significant other or spouse. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there that needs to feel comfortable, just hanging around and being with them, doing mundane things. That needs to be fun and not something that you feel stressed about. How's that sound? So far, so good. I, okay. I agree 100. Well, obviously, I agree. Okay. I'm sitting here. But, yeah. No, the fourth I... thing for me is intellect. Um, I just think there has to be a connection intellectually. You need to be interesting to me, and you, you have to be opinionated. Um, oh, wait. Time out. Did you all hear that? You heard yeah. that, right? He said, I have to be opinionated. Yeah. I'm just, it's on the record. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. For Sorry. me, it's important that, you know, I'm with somebody who, you know, has kind of an intellectual curiosity. And, um, you know, we like to talk about things that are going on in the world. We do. And uh, there are things that are going on in our kids' lives and to intellectualize them a little bit. Not all the time, but there's an element of kind of going through kind of an analysis on whatever we're doing. Although I think we're unique because... You think so? I, to some degree because okay. I am friends with other um, attorneys' wives and... We talk about your cases. I mean, generally, you don't give me generally. like Not names specific. and specifics, yeah, yeah. but we talk about you the issues and you bounce bit. legal yeah. stuff off of uh, me. Absolutely. When I first started practicing law as a criminal prosecutor, I used to... That was to, fun. Uh, you used to cross-examine me. And I used to practice my opening statement <laughs> and my me. closing argument with Marnie, and she was a great... You know, Marnie is really smart. I mean, very intellectual. That's you, the best you know that I feel that way about you. I know, but, but you're a good audience. You're, you're, you're almost too good of an smart. audience because you're not the average juror. <laughs> you're too smart <laughs> to be the average. But you're a good audience for me. And not only that, it's not just about my ability to practice my legal skills in front of you. It's, it's much more. <laughs> so romantic. Me. But, you know, we, we, uh, I know we had a little budgeting series, but we're able to kind of be on the same page intellectually in terms of how finances work and things that we deal with with the children, whether it's a medical issue or just, you know, working on developing an appropriate curriculum for them to mm -hmm. engage in. We're talking about our older son looking at college choices, thinking about, you know, having a conversation with wow. your significant other in a way where it's very kind of two-sided and mm -hmm. it's engaging, you know, it's collaborative. So let me ask you, you're not saying that everyone needs to marry a genius, no. like you did. No, I'm definitely... But, I'm just kidding. But yeah. um, that the intellect needs to match up. It needs to match up. Yeah. Totally needs We're to match up. We're back to match I think if you have a disparity in intellect, um, 
there could be problems downstream. There could be animosity that, oh, yeah. that, that, that kind of, there could be either A, animosity, or B, there could be some jealousy that kicks in at some point. Both of which, animosity and jealousy, are, I think are deal killers. They're relationship killers. And I, I think it mind. would cause a rift in yeah. the relationship. People would drift apart. That's correct, exactly. Yeah. So that is uh, number four. Number five kind of is um, I'm, I'm it's, it's at the his last, but it, it's, it's obviously important. I mean, it's, uh, it's the physical attraction piece of it. And so, you know, I would say to my kids, that's something that oftentimes is the first thing you notice is the physical attraction. A I, lot of people I, that's what get I, into a relationship originally say, based on physical attraction. That's how I noticed you. So that, to me, is kind of an easy box to check. I mean, yeah. you're physically attracted, they're physically attracted to you, and then you've got this wonderful that's kind of chemistry this. that connects with each other because, for me, attraction to me is that I'm interested in being with you because you value your femininity. Your femininity, that's important. I like you? that. You're kind of a girly girl in some ways. That to me is important. Like I don't, I don't know that I would be all that attracted to somebody that was overly uh, masculine. They could hurt you. <laughs> I mean, but I like that you're athletic. Are, on, the other, on the other hand, you're you're, you're you're interested in your appearance, though. I mean, I, obviously, not only well, just makeup, to but a ridiculous degree now. And then, and then the lifestyle issue. You also kind of are interested in keeping yourself fit physically and working Style. out in ways that you know keep you looking good and you look great. Um, but also that. That attraction is that um, the woman kind of appreciates, you know, their their male counterpart, their role in the relationship. That that that's also important too. So I don't know. I think physical attraction is kind of an easy thing to spot because you know it when you see it. And then I would just recommend, hopefully, when my kids are listening to us at some point and they they're going listen. through this kind of an analysis of, gee, I'm with this woman and I'm really attracted to her and it's getting serious. Then they would look to the other four factors to kind of go through that analysis and maybe it's not an exhaustive list but for me I wasn't able to think of anything more than those five and that's kind of like the top five factors. Those and, are good. Uh, that's kind of it at the end of the day. I, I think thought. those are really good. I would also like to add that the physical attractiveness I have found in our friends whose marriages have failed. Okay. That was the first thing to go. Really? Is so tell me about that. I they don't were understand what you're talking about. Friends, they were buddies. To begin with? No, at a, this at the point before the marriage failed, okay. they had no physical attraction you know, to each other anymore. Do you know if when they first started going out with one another, if they were physically attracted Not immediately, like or we, if it's something that they yeah. even developed, or maybe never even? I don't think like us. No, because you know there are some couples out there that are not. You know, you often hear, gee, it wasn't love at first sight, right. or, sure. you know, we were just kind of friends to begin with, which to me is a telltale sign that maybe you're not all, maybe it's not a mutual attraction. I think I do know a lot of people who are kind of friends with their but if it works significant for others, but I'm not sure that that friendship is necessarily shared by both, like meaning it could be one or the other mm. is physically attracted and maybe it's not reciprocated, oh, but then it develops horrible. over time, yeah. but it may not be lasting because that's, that's a bit of a risk. If you don't have that commonality of attraction and you've only got one-sided attraction or, or maybe not even an attraction at all and it just kind of gets forced into something more without the attraction piece, to me, personally, that could be a little bit dangerous. I, right? I, I think that, I mean, I know it seems like such a superficial thing, but the yeah. physical attractiveness is so important over the long haul because it's a way, sounds so hokey, yeah. it's a way to spiritually connect with someone physically, okay. with not someone, with right. my spouse, okay. and it gives you a different level of connectedness that just together time, mm -hmm. doing non-physical things doesn't yeah. give you. I think that's probably right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how okay. I look at it. So, I'm going to have to go now watch the video that, that would be nice. Marnie had put up four years ago, four and a half years three, ago. Four, uh, it's been a while back. I and know it's not in HD, any, uh, I'm just warning you now. See if we have any overlap on some of these points. There are a few. You think so? Okay. I know attractiveness was cool. in there. I think okay. parenting was in there. I think intellect... Something related Something to related intellect was to in, there. in there. Okay. I hit religion. What about social habits, social graces? I can't remember. I don't know. I've done like 800 videos on this. Okay. It's hard to remember them all. So if I were to wrap it up, I would say I'd want to have common, kind of a common connection with my significant other, with you obviously, or yes. generally with a significant other in the following ways. Uh, you're on the same page with parenting. Okay. One. I'm going to take them off. Uh, you've got lifestyle commonality. Mm -hmm. uh, you're all on the same page with respect to social graces, how okay. you act, you know, outwardly, and then uh, intellectually mm -hmm. connected, and an obvious physical attraction. Yes. 
that is in play. Okay. And that's it. I want you to read that last line. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I put that on there because Marnie asked me to take some notes to make sure I was keeping I my thoughts notes. clear. Mm -hmm. So I've got those five factors. And then it was really nice, kind of the icing on the cake, like the extra credit, I would say, is so that funny. one thing that I don't know if y'all know generally, but for many years, I think it was 22 seasons, I was the With head coach of a baseball or basketball or football team for our kids. Yeah. Not we 22 years, but they seasons, played like three, seasons. four seasons at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And we had a great time, we but did. really one of the things so that fun. made it so fun for me is that I had the absolute best team mom. We've had a lot of team moms over the years, even in high school, but the very best team mom that we've had has been Marnie. And so for all those factors, really important. The other thing that I would say that <laughs> what makes mom. a great spouse is someone who could be a great team mom. Mom to everybody. So that was good. Yeah, she was a great team mom to the kids and to, to me as a coach. So that was fun. All righty. <laughs> and we're done. That's all I got. Yeah, we should turn the camera off. Yes. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Thanks for doing these. It was fun. I know. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's still rolling. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta You can edit things. that. No. I'm leaving that in. Hey everyone, welcome to another Marty Michael Monday. This one I am really excited uh, to do because I don't know the answers to all the questions. I asked you on Twitter or Instagram and on a YouTube video 